poet, the young girl, was very good, wasn't she? Yeah. Now, so I think maybe we can start. Um, there are eight non-video participants. That's okay. John says he doesn't have a camera, but that's fine, John. That's fine. But you can, June. Hi, June. But you can um, type in a question, June, if you want to, and, and in the chat box if you have a question. So, and when when Guanya starts speaking. Um, it's the easiest way of doing it is, is to go to speaker view on your on your screen. So if you go to speaker view, you will just get her face. But if you want gallery view, you can see everybody's faces. But she's on the top left hand corner on my screen. So you might you might want to just focus on her when she's giving the presentation. And then when we're doing the practice, you can go back to gallery view so we can see everybody doing the actual practice itself. Um, Annie, do you have a question? No, okay. I just saw you raising your, your real hand, not your virtual hand. <laughs> <laughs> you can also ra raise your real hand as well, because I do see you, um, but all I'm adjusting hands. the lighting. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, <fine. laughs> That's great. Um, so just to give you some background, um, I think a lot of you probably know me, uh, seminars.ie. I do a lot of, I've done a lot of sort of personal development seminars over the years, for so about 20 years actually. Um, and I've worked with people like Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, all sorts of exotic people. And in fact, I'm actually giving a seminar next Wednesday, the 27th, on what I think are the best life messages from these gurus that I've, that I've worked with. So if you want to join that, it's on my website, it's uh, seminars.ie, and it's next Wednesday at seven o'clock, and I'll try and impart some wisdom to you. Um, Gronia, we've I've worked with Gronia, we get to the session before Christmas, and there's such a great response, I thought we'd do it again, and I think the whole thing of emotional freedom, freedom of tapping is really interesting. I mean, it really does work, and, um, and I've tried it and I definitely found it very helpful. My, my daughter suffers from anxiety and she finds it very helpful. And I think the whole point about it is it's, it's tapping the meridian points. And so it's like a marriage between Eastern and Western medicine, if you like, and just getting used to using your meridian points to relieve stress. And, and I actually have found, I mean, I'm actually having a dry January, which I think a lot of people are, even during lockdown, when everybody's eating and drinking too much, I decided to give up. <laughs> and I actually find when I, I does find if I do that tapping, just saying, "Look, I I don't need it." It does. It definitely does help. So, um, Guanya herself was in the corporate world, and she um, she suffered from chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, she loved the corporate world, but she decided that she had to change direction in her life, and she did, did, uh, did neuro-linguistic programming, coaching, but she found that EFT was the technique that she most resonated with. I, f I first heard about uh, EFT through Roger Callan, which is TFT, um, thought freedom technique, and that was Jack Canfield who was doing that. And he said that, he, he, he mentioned that Roger Callan, Dr. Roger Callan treated victims of severe trauma through TFT, um, which is the same technique. For example, victims who had seen horrendous things in Kosovo, they'd seen the families murdered in front of them and really horrible things. Nothing worked for them, but TFT and EFT did. It, it cleared the trauma. So I thought that was actually fascinating because it can change the way you react to things. And, change lifelong habits. So that's what has really drawn me to it. And when I found Gornia, I thought she's the ideal person to teach this. So Gornia, having, having done, been in the corporate world, um, she now trains in EFT, emotional freedom technique. She trains people to do it. And she does private sessions. And, and you, I'm sure you will say a lot more about it, Gornia. Um, I think we've got everybody here. So. Everybody who's going to be here is here. So I'll pass you over to Gronia. Um, as I say, you can go to speak of you if you want to just see Gronia. And I and you're all muted now, so that's great. Except for Jan. I'll have to mute Jan. Okay, you're muted now. 
And um, when we have questions, you can unmute yourself or I'll unmute you and we'll deal with the questions later. So over to you, Gronia. You're very welcome. Thank you, Jane. And delighted to be here and welcome to everybody. Delighted to see so many faces. And uh, yeah, we're all getting so used to working by Zoom now. It's like second nature to us. Um, so anyway, you're all very welcome. And just to say, if anybody has any private questions, so you can put a question in the chat box and everybody will see. But say, for instance, you want to ask a question, but you don't necessarily want everybody to know it's you. So you message me directly and I'll be able to see it and I can read out the question, but I just won't read out your name. So just to say that, that that's there for you if, if you want to do that at any stage. Um, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a little bit about EFT, where it's come from, how it works, and then we, we get to do some tapping as a group. So I think because at the moment uh, with these COVID times and the latest lockdown, I think there's a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. So it's very timely, actually, Jane, that we're doing this now. So I'm delighted to be here. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about EFT. So EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, and it has its roots in acupuncture. So acupuncture has been around for thousands of years. And uh, the theory of acupuncture is that we have these meridians of energy flowing around our body. And when we're sick or when we're injured, um, you know, the acupuncture will say, well, you know, your meridians are blocked. They'll put pins in different places and then that kind of will release the flow of energy and the energy starts to flow freely again. So the way acupuncture was developed, it was very much developed by kind of observation. So it, it, there wasn't anatomy, so people weren't dissecting bodies. So it was very much looking at measuring your pulse rate, looking at your skin tone, looking at very minute changes in the body. So taking you back now to the 20th century, so moving way on from where acupuncture started, um, in the 1960s, there was a man called George Goodhart, and he was an American chiropractor. And he studied acupuncture and he found that actually tapping on points was as effective as using needles and much less invasive so he was the first person who actually did that and he developed a thing called applied kinesiology and that's using muscle testing so i don't know whether people are familiar with muscle testing but at its basic very basic level and if there are any kinesiologists out there i apologize because it's a very simplified very simplified explanation but say for instance you are allergic or you're sensitive to wheat you know, your, and they test your muscle in your arm, your arm would go weak. So, um, so George Goodhart, he developed this thing called applied kinesiology, using muscle testing and also using tapping. So he was using it to see which treatments would be the best for the person. And then building on this, there was an Australian psychiatrist called John Diamond, and he developed this even further. And he found that by using certain statements, and tapping on certain points, acupuncture points around the body, it helped to resolve emotional issues or emotional conditions. Then in the 1980s, there was a man called Roger Callan, who Jane just mentioned, and he had trained with um, he had trained with John Diamond, and he was specialising in dealing with phobias and dealing with anxiety, and he was a psychologist. And he'd been working with this woman for um, a while now, and she had this terrible fear of water, real phobia and real anxiety around water. Now, so much so that like even like going by a swimming pool was terrifying for her. And this was, you know, after the Jaws had come out and she was delighted when Jaws came out because her kids didn't want to go to the beach anymore. So she was absolutely thrilled when Jaws came out. So she really had a really big phobia about water. And so they were having a session and she came in one day and she said, you know, when I think about the water, I just, my stomach feels really bad. She said, you know, I really feel ill in my stomach. So he said, just tap here, which is the point under the eye, which is your stomach. Rid. He said, just tap here for a few minutes. So she did that for a couple of minutes. And then she said to him, I don't have a phobia of water anymore. And he just thought, oh my God, you know, this is very odd, very strange. And, um, but sure enough, her phobia had completely gone and uh, so she went out and she was splashing water in her face and it was completely gone. So this just kind of piqued his interest. And he said, hmm, well, OK, maybe this is just a one off or whatever. So he started using the muscle testing and using all the different tapping uh, points around the body, the tapping points around the body. He was testing different things to see if they would work on different conditions, you know, apart from phobias. So he developed a thing called thought field therapy. So it's a bit of an elocution lesson, thought field therapy. And so basically what it is, it's a collection of 200 different algorithms, depending on what your condition is. 
So for instance, if you have anxiety, it's one set of points. If you fear, it's another set of points. If it's anger, another set of points. So depending on what your issue was, you he would you do have your you do muscle testing and then they'd use whatever particular points uh, were needed for for the condition. So along in the 90s came a man called um, Gary Craig, and he was a Stanford trained engineer and also a personal performance coach. And he thought it was great. He studied with Roger Callan, but he just said, look, it's a little bit complicated, you know, because if anybody wants to do this, number one, they have to know how to muscle test. And then they all also have to learn 200 different algorithms. And he said, but this is very, very complicated. Could we not make it a little bit simpler? So he developed what we know today as tapping. So EFT, emotional freedom techniques. So it's one set of points around the body. So no matter what the condition is, you tap on the same set of points. And in tapping these points, you're going to be hitting all of the major meridians. So you don't have to know which point is for which or whatever. You just tap on the same points no matter what the issue is. And um, yeah, and I have a diagram of the, of the points that Gary Craig used. So I, I sent that to Jane. Uh, I sent that to Jane again. So when she's sending out the recording to you, then you'll also have that. Um, so all you need to do is like, once you know what the points are, you can just then use whatever words. I mean, we have a certain set of words that we use, but certainly you can use your own words. And in fact, your own words are much more powerful uh, rather than using something that I might say to you, whatever. So your own words are very powerful. So how does it work? So it's sometimes referred to as energy psychology or emotional acupuncture. And I think they're both very, very good descriptions because you're working on the energy system. So all the meridians around the body and there's also a bit of talking in it as well. So there's a bit of psychology in it and, you know, uh, me measuring the, the level of intensity of the emotions. So it's the two things combined. So it's like it's a really nice, a really nice way of describing it. So with acupuncture, you have these rivers of energy flowing around your body. And if you hurt your foot and you go to an acupuncturist, you'd say, oh, your meridians are blocked. Put the needles in different places to unblock them, the, the, to release the blockage. And then, bam, and your energy is flowing freely again. Very, very same thing. When we have a negative emotion, if you think about, I mean, you just think about the moment with COVID and say, oh my God, it's COVID. And, oh, we're locked up again. So, you know, your shoulders might tense up, you know, or your stomach might lurch, or you have a tightness in your chest. So we have very physical reactions to stress and anxiety and negative emotions. Like you really feel them in our body. So in the same way, we would say, if you're feeling a negative emotion, you've also got a block in your energy system. So you've all of these rivers of energy flowing around your body. And you think about COVID and you go, oh, oh my God, or whatever. And it's like a big tree has fallen down. And every time you think, oh my God, it's COVID, or oh, we're locked up again, you keep hitting this tree. And what we do is we set, we tap on these points around the body. And when we do that, we send a vibration down the energy line. It shifts the block a little bit. And then keep on doing that until the, the energy is starting to flow freely again. So, we also have all these filing cabinets full of memories. And sometimes when we start to tap, you know, sometimes maybe different memories or different thoughts might come out. So that can just happen just when, when you're tapping. And just to explain a little bit about how the brain works and, and the tapping, what it does to the brain. So you can see all see my hand. So if you imagine that this is your spinal cord and you come up here and then this here is your lower brain or your reptilian brain. And this is the part of the brain that com that controls you know, breathing, digestion, your heart, all the stuff that happens without just even having to think about it. That's all happening in your lower brain or your reptilian brain. And then across the middle, you have what's called your midbrain or your the limbic system. And this is where long term memories and emotions are stored. And as part of the limbic system, there's a thing called the amygdala and that um, controls the production of the stress hormone cortisol. So that's all happening in this midbrain part. And then over the top, we have what's called the neocortex or the new brain. And this takes in the humans, this takes up most of the area of our brain. And this contains like logic, reasoning, rational thinking, creativity, all these kind of things that make us human, that they're all stored in this part of the brain. So when we are stressed, the blood goes from this part of the brain where rational and reasoning is stored. You literally flip your lid. And it goes straight to this part of the brain, to the, the midbrain, the limbic system. And one of the things that happens is that it starts producing the stress hormone cortisol. So it starts pumping it and so it's like, oh my God, danger, danger, danger. So when people say if they're stressed, oh my God, I can't think straight when they're stressed. Well, it's absolutely no surprise because the blood has gone from the rational reasoning part 
flipped your lid and it's gone straight to this bit and it starts producing the stress hormone cortisol. So when we start to tap, when we start to tap and when we get stimulated acupuncture points around the body, a couple of things happen. One is that it switches off the amygdala and sends a calming signal to that part of the brain. The second thing that happens is that it sends the blood back from this part of the brain back to the neocortex so that actually, oh, okay, now I can start to think clearly. Now I can understand things, okay? The inflammation gene response genes are turned down and the immune response genes are turned up. So all of that happens when you're, when you're stimulating acupuncture points. So even if you're not saying any words, it's going to be doing you some good by actually just tapping on the points. So one of the great things, and actually Jack Canfield, um, Jane talked about Jack Canfield, like he talks about how it helps people to complete the process and you know if you look at i, I wrote a blog kind of a couple of years ago and it was about what a series of the apprentice i love the apprentice and, and i'm just like but they were all a bunch of five-year-olds running around that's basically what they are they're all five-year-olds like it wasn't the adult says all these five-year-olds running around and i think that's what happened that can happen to us that you know rather than adult growing your reaction to a situation in an adult way it's actually my five-year-old self and uh, people kind of have often commented to me and said like i cannot believe that my five-year-old self is still running the show yeah. and the reason that that happens is that if something happens and jack canfield he, he has a great video on tapping if you ever want to just google jack canfield and tapping a really nice explanation on tapping but he talks about tapping and what, one of the things that we do is we help people to complete the process and, and what we mean by that so the example he gives like say your dog dies and you're crying like oh my dog is dead you know you're crying you're really upset and maybe your mom does say like stop that crying big stop that big girls don't cry you know stop that and so you you you, you kind of like you seize up and you stop crying and and maybe maybe it'll just come out in the wash anyway and you'll get to process it but sometimes what happens is these events happen and they just kind of get stuck inside us so you never get to finish being sad about your dog and then maybe as a result of that sometimes people develop things like well maybe my 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 it's not safe to show my emotions or my needs are not important or um big girls don't cry you know whatever you know what I mean and the, the most benign circumstance I mean I've worked with so many people and you would say actually god that's really that's really not a big deal to an adult it's not a big deal but to a child it could be a huge deal um, it could be the end of the world but you know for that we say oh but that, i don't understand that's not important so one of the things with tapping is kind of going back to certain situations sometimes you want to working at a deeper level and helping people to complete the process so that now when they're reacting it's kind of an adult reacting rather than going back to kind of five-year-old growing you're reacting and you know you know rather than in a rational and you know logical way so what can it be used for so it's brilliant for kind of top line stress, anxiety, things like that. So during the first lockdown, I was actually running. I um, I ran uh, once a week kind of for about, about four months. I did kind of like just a COVID stress release thing once a week or whatever, just because people had so much anxiety. There was so much fear. And I also think people were in a bit of shock. I know I was in a bit of shock. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, like, who would have thought we could have just shut down the country like that? I never thought I would see that you know, we wouldn't have thought it was possible. So there was definitely a collective shock and kind of trauma there. <laughs> so what we were trying to do was just like, just meeting up once a week or whatever, and people were just coming along with whatever they were feeling, whether it was anxiety, people feeling lonely, being sad or whatever. Um, and just so it's very good for kind of like top line stress, top line anxiety, things like that. It's also very good. So I have some notes, so just so that I don't forget uh, things. Very uh, good for things like, you know, physical issues and pain management. So I would have done a lot of work with people with cancer over the years. And like, it's not a substitute for medical treatment. Absolutely not at all. But what I ha certainly have noticed that if people have a lot of physical pain, if they also have a lot of emotional stuff going on as well, it tends to make the pain even worse. So I volunteered for a cancer charity. I did a year there. And so very often people would come in and you know, the treatment, cancer treatment is very harsh on the body. So there is pain involved. Um, but always if they'd had an experience with a doctor or a nurse or, you know, and somebody maybe just being a little bit thoughtless or, I mean, I had one particular woman and she found actually having the scans, which had had breast cancer, really traumatizing and you're having to strip off or whatever. And, and the, the young person, she said, oh, well, we did a role play on that. And she said, well, 
did you actually take your clothes off, you know? And you, oh, no, 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 we didn't. And um, so sometimes can people feel that, you know, that maybe they don't understand what I'm going through. And so they can find that upsetting. So it's lots of reasons why people might have emotions kind of stored up or whatever in relation to whatever is going on. And I suppose my attitude is, well, why don't you take as much stress out of the body? Why don't you just get rid of it? So that actually your body, the medicines will do what the medicines are going to do. And if you take all this, the, the stress out of your body, then your body can do as much as it's going to do and to heal itself in conjunction with the medicine. So it's not, it's not a substitute for medicine, but just why not? It's a waste of energy, put it that way. It's a waste of energy if you're feeling stressed or angry, whatever, when you could be using the energy to heal yourself. So that's the way, the way I look at it. Um, and I worked with one particular woman. She actually came to me, um, she had, was waking up in the night with panic attacks. That's, that's why she came to me. So always, you know, when I'm working with people, it's just trying to find out like, where does this come from? What's the root of this? So we started talking and, um, you know, because what I always say to people is like, you didn't pop out of the womb having panic attacks. You know, something has happened in your life that has triggered this and is trying to find that and to neutralize whatever thoughts are you, you're having around that. And so as we were talking, then she started to tell me about that this really bad car accident that she had been in and somebody had died in the car accident. And uh, so it was obviously a major trauma. So she also started telling me that as a result of the accident that she had this pain and um, she called it pain and numbness. So it was, a kind of, it was a kind of funny just pain and numbness. And I went from her neck all the way down one side of the body right to the tips of her fingers. And Anyway, she had been to the doctors about this and they basically said, look, you, you neurological damage. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, you just have to live with it. So, so she was just living with it. And it was just as a, you know, by the by, she was telling me about this. So we started tapping on the accident itself and I kind of like, you know, working on the kind of the whole trauma of the accident itself, but also like the after effects and everything. So lots and lots of um, different aspects to what had happened. And with each round, the pain was moving down a bit and then down another bit. And, and gradually it moved all the way down her arm until all that she was left with was like this kind of tingling at the end of her fingers. And her explanation of it was that she felt that holding on to this pain was her way of holding on to the memory of the person who'd been killed in the accident. That was her explanation for it. So I don't know. But uh, she didn't have any more panic attacks and she no longer had pain. The only time she said she had pain, she, this person is an artist, she said it was when she was sitting for hours at her her desk or whatever and painting and not moving that she would get a pain in her neck sometimes. But apart from that, the pain was gone. And it's interesting that she had kind of forgotten that she'd had panic attacks. That she was, she just think, oh yeah, I had pain or whatever. So it just kind of shows how the body, sometimes when we haven't processed things, sometimes the body comes up to speak. And um, so just, it's a, it's, it's a really kind of interesting, interesting um, thing. So it's very, very useful for trauma. Um, and in the States, uh, the US military have approved EFT as one of the treatments for post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's, um, they've approved, there's two training organizations. So one is the training organization I'm a member of, which is EFT International, and also an organization called EFT Universe. So we're the only two approved uh, trainers for people providing EFT to the US military. So they're using that, so that's fantastic. And they found it very, very effective. And what they do is they actually train veterans up in EFT and then they deliver. So I just think it's, it's a really nice, it's a really nice way of working. Um, and then also in certain parts of the NHS in the UK, they use it for treating anxiety. So not everywhere, but there are certain parts, little pockets in the NHS where they're using that. And then also in France, in the in some of the universities, they've introduced it as a therapy brev, brief therapies. So they're introducing it as part of their training. So it's really nice that it's becoming more recognized and it's becoming more prevalent. So it's really nice to see that. So um, I'm just going to just show you the points and just um, just to see how it works. So the first is the, the, the fleshy bit at the side of your hand. So if you just Take one hand and with all of your fingers and just tap the side of your hand. And this is usually where we would say whatever is going on. So I'm feeling stressed or I'm feeling anxious or whatever. Um, and we just say that in this part of the hand. So how the session would work is and how we do it tonight is that I'll say words and then you will repeat them after me. So that's the first point. So I'm going to take off my glass for the next. So the second point is, so if you take two fingers, go up your nose, 
and where your eyebrow, a little bit near, so where your eyebrow starts to grow. So we tap there. The next point is at the side of your eye, so the bone, the bone at the side of your eye. The next is directly under your eye. So if you see the bone just there, so if you're looking straight ahead and directly below your pupil, that point there, I'm gonna put on my glasses so you can actually do it with glasses as well. So just point there, between the nose and the top of your mouth, the cleft in your chin. And then your chest here. So I'm just gonna show you two points here. So you have your collarbone here, let me move up a bit closer. And if you go down one inch and across one inch either side, in Chinese medicine, they are your kidney points. And the kidney points in Chinese medicine are all to do with fear. So that's the first bit that you want to get. But also what you want to get is your thymus. So if you see the old black and white movies and the old ladies get frightened, they go, oh, like that, okay. So that's the thymus they're hitting. So we want to get the thymus, but we also want to get the kidney points. And if anybody has any kind of anxiety or fear or whatever, this is the one, or social anxiety, this is the one that people usually find, from my experience, the most comforting. And so if you're in a situation and you're kind of thinking, oh my God, anxiety is spiking up, you could certainly tap like this, or you could just gently massage or even just rest your hand. So you make sure you get the points here. So one inch down and one inch across either side, and then your time is so just even like that. And sometimes people instinctively just do that. Actually, if they're feeling a little bit upset, they instinctively, you know, can actually do that. Okay. So that's that point. The next is then under your arms. So if you take your the, your the full of your hand and a couple of inches below your armpit. Okay. Just there. And then the last point is is if you have um, your hand in a little kind of claw, and what I like to do is I like to go around in a circle and tapping on the points around the top of the head. You have on the top of your head what's called the 100 meeting point. So you have all these meridians meeting up here. And uh, so if you're doing that, you're going to get hitting a lot of the major meridians. Now, sometimes people will find a certain point and they say, oh my God, you know, that's, that's lovely. And actually I had somebody today and it's top of the head. They just love the top of the head. So I just said, well, why don't you use that then? You know what I mean? If you're in a situation or whatever, you feel yourself kind of, the tension is rising, so I say, maybe just use that. And um, that's the one most common one I see. And sometimes people decide hand, but you might just find a particular point that's going to really be, say, oh yeah, that, that really does it for me. That really, you know, works for me. So it'd be different for everyone. So, um, I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about kind of, you know, I suppose people I've worked with um, I worked a lot with people with um, social anxiety and phobias and things like that, negative beliefs. Um, and, you know, what I always say is like, you know, I say it didn't come from nowhere. So I was just trying to get to the root of where this has come from. And uh, and there's one particular person I was working with and they came to me about, you know, not being very confident. There's lots of things they wanted to do, but because they were so um so lacking in confidence that they really just found that they weren't you know able to do what they wanted to do and there was one particular event or whatever and there was before this event and after that so i have a question from sort of saying does it matter which hand you use to tap good great question no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what hand so you can use and you can start with one hand and you can change the other so if one hand is feeling a bit tired you can change the other so that's a really good question and sometimes actually what people like to do is they like to use both hands so if you're kind of oh and it's not going to make it more effective but sometimes kind of people feel like it gives them a bit more welly if they do with both hands so whatever feels comfortable for you and you can start with one hand or start with two hands and go with one hand so it doesn't matter which side which side uh, you use okay so thank you for that question um so yes, yeah, so I was working with this this person, and uh, there was a, before this event, and then after this event, and everything kind of it, you know, his this person's life changed completely. And so now we've done a lot of tapping around other bits of things, you know, what I mean, just taking because we didn't like dive into that straight away. But um, we use a technique called the movie technique, and it's a really gentle way of dealing with the trauma. And actually, by the time we tapped on all things around it or whatever, by the time we got into it, actually, it wasn't such a big deal. And it was, you know, he, he just said like, well, actually, I spent my life avoiding this and not talking about it and not thinking about it. And actually he said, you know, it, it, it's completely neutral now. And it really changed him. And so much so that his family was saying like that they, they were really delighted how engaging he was and it just back to his old self, whatever. And um, so it just gonna have huge, huge benefits for people. 
So what I thought I'd do is that maybe we just do a um, a round of tapping and just to see how, um, yeah, just, just do a round of tapping and then we can uh, take some questions after that. And maybe we'll do, some, maybe do a round just to see where people are at and what people is going on for people and do a round of tapping. That's it. Okay. You want people to um, unmute, Sonia? Uh, no. Yes, they could do. So I have a question. So are there any EFT uh, techniques from acne uh, for acne um, P, for acne from PMT? Is it or acne with PMT? Um, so it certainly could help. Um, now I'm not familiar with acne, and I mean I don't have my book here. I have a book on them. Um, sometimes there may be if things are triggered by stress that's a really good question if things are triggered triggered by stress and i don't know enough about um acne and skin conditions whether they are triggered by stress but i could imagine it certainly doesn't help so certainly you could even tapping on things like you know, how do i feel about having this acne how do i um hormones hormones more and stress yes okay great thank you very much so yeah so definitely if you could take the stress that uh, out of, out of the equation as much as possible well, then maybe you might still get your act, but maybe it's not going to be as bad. And so I would think that there's lots of things around it. So it would be general stress in your life, but also how do you feel about having acne? Because I would imagine people might be very annoyed or angry or frustrated. So that might be a really good place to start. So even though I'm really frustrated about having this acne, I hate the way it looks on my skin or whatever, because I would imagine, you know, you'd have lots of emotions and lots of feelings about it. So. With EFT and tapping, it's all, I'd say, but it's like meeting you where you're at. And if where you're at is actually, I'm really annoyed with this, I'm fed up with this or whatever, well, that's where you start. So it's always about meeting you where you're at. Okay, okay so we might just do a round of tapping and um, and just see um, see where we go. And um, that's great. Okay, so we're just going to tap and start again. So I'm going to say the words, and if you want to just kind of follow Follow what I'm doing and also then repeat the words um, that I'm saying. So, so even though. So if you want to unmute yourselves. Um, completely uh, up to you. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to, but if yeah. you like to, it's great. Yeah. It's a bit lonely up here if I have nobody answering to you. So it'd be nice. <laughs> if you I'll, I'll say something. Great. Okay. So even though. Even though. I'm not sure about this tapping stuff. I'm not sure about I'm not sure about this tapping stuff. I think it sounds a bit yeah, flaky. It sounds a bit flaky. And I'm not really sure about it. Not really sure. I'm not really, I'm sure, not really about sure about it. it. And I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though. Even though. Even though. I hope nobody sees me. I hope nobody I hope sees me. They think I'm gone a bit strange. <laughs> I've gone a bit strange. Yeah. And I'm really not sure about this. I'm really, really not, not sure about this. And I'm very skeptical about it. Very skeptical, very skeptical about it. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though. Even though. I'm really not sure about this tapping. I'm really not sure about this. Not sure why I came onto this call. Not sure why I came onto this call. And it's all looking a bit strange. It's all looking a bit strange. And I can't believe we're all tapping along. I can't believe we're all tapping along. Because it's very odd looking all together. This is very, very odd looking all together. But I'm open to giving it a try. And I'm open to giving it a try. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay. Feeling skeptical. 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 Can't understand how this will work. Can't understand how this will work. It's all a bit strange. It's all a bit strange. I hope nobody sees me. I hope nobody sees me. It's very odd looking. Very odd, very odd looking. It's all a bit strange. It's all a bit strange. But I'm open to giving it a try. I'm open to giving it a try. And seeing how it works. Inhale. Oh, can I take a big deep breath in? Okay.
Okay, so that was a very general round. So we just really want just to see if anybody wants to just maybe just share how they're feeling. I know we have a question there. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, just to see how people are feeling after that one round, just to, to get a bit of feedback. Anyone want to share how they're feeling after that? Really relaxed. Good. Who's that now? Liz, sorry. Liz. I don't have my... Oh, Liz, great. Okay, good, good, great. Thanks, Liz. Anybody else? I, I find it's very um, de-stressing and I particularly like the one that you said everybody seems to like, which is the chest one. Yes. It does, it does really does um, center you. Yeah, 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 great. Okay. Yeah. I have a couple of questions there, so, and they're to me personally, so I'm not going to read out the person's name. Um, okay, great one. Just tapping help with food binging to deal with anxiety. Absolutely. I'm going to show you a little shortcut for that. Um, and thank you. Somebody said that their, their shoulders aren't as tight. Uh, great. OK, so in terms of uh, food and anxiety. So actually, how I came across tapping was through Paul McKenna. Now, Paul McKenna does TFT as opposed to EFT, but they're very closely linked. And he uh, I don't know if people are familiar with him, but he's written all his book. I can make you thin. I can make you rich. I can make you confident, whatever. So anyway, it was I can make you thin. I thought, oh, great. I'll have a look at this program and it was on on the tv and he was working with somebody who had um i think it was an addiction to chocolate or something <clears throat> and uh, anyway so he was tapping along or whatever and he just said oh you know tap along at home so this is before i'd even trained in eft and uh so for me the the um the food was butter like a kerrygold butter like a lifelong love affair with kerrygold and you know, my husband would say to me, like, you know, do you want some bread with your butter? Because I'd be putting on big, thick layers of butter. Absolutely loved it. So I just said, oh, I just tap along to this or whatever. You know, no idea what it is. So I was just tapping along, whatever. And he was dealing with the woman and the chocolate and saying the chocolatey words. And I was just doing my thing, whatever. And then I didn't eat butter for six months. And I was absolutely amazed because I just said, well, God, if we can do this for butter, what could it do for something else? Now, anxiety or cravings are very much linked to anxiety. And, you know, Paul McKenna asks, you know, do I really want this butter, chocolate, wine, whatever it is, or do I want to change the way I feel? Usually it's we want to change the way we feel. And um, so and that's, I suppose, so while you can tap on a craving, say, for instance, for a butter or chocolate or whatever, but you really, you know, and you can do that. And I say the butter thing kind of you know went for six months. But you do want to get to the underlying issue as to, well, what's causing you to, to, to want this extra food or what's causing you to want the, the glass of wine or whatever. So somebody else had a question that does it help with addiction? Absolutely. So I've worked with people on smoking. And, and again, it's about, you know, kind of smoking is kind of a complex one in that, you know, there's the social aspect. There's lots of different aspects to smoking or whatever. And um, so it's about kind of breaking those down to the different aspects, but like, what is it that makes you want to do this? Or what is it giving to you? Um, and, or what is it trying to change? Do you want to change the way you feel? So what's the, what's the thing that you want to change? What's the feeling that you want to change? So that's a really good question, you know, to ask, but do I really want this chocolate or do I, do I want to change the way I feel? So if you can kind of stop yourself in a moment. So anyway, the shortcut, so that's will give you the shortcut. Shortcut for anxiety, and this is a TFT thing. So under the eye, tapping under the eye, the one at your chest, and under the arm. So if you do that for a couple of minutes, and um, that's, you know, that's the shortcut. So rather than do all the points, you say, oh my God, I have to do it quickly. I'm, I'm reaching for the chocolate again. So just under the eye, the collarbone point, and then under the arm. So there, that's the shortcut for cravings, um, cravings and addictions. But um, so yes, so absolutely, it can, it can help, you know, it can be very helpful. And I've, you know, I've worked with people and, you know, even though I worked with somebody who was, quite a heavy recreational drug user and we weren't um working on that at all but actually the next time they came back I said well, actually do you know I felt I didn't need to have whatever substance they were on they actually didn't need to have that here when I went out and so even though we weren't working on it directly by working on whatever I think was is confidence and raising self-esteem that actually that was having an effect that they felt that they didn't need the whatever um drug their drug of choice was yeah and um, any other questions Sorry, with with the shortcut um for something to eat or you know whatever you were talking about there the shortcut do you have to speak as well during that shortcut then no, you have you, to... 
it's kind of like an emergency one. So no, you don't necessarily have to, whatever you can just, and actually we could do a round on cravings. It's actually, it's kind of a bit of fun to do that. You don't necessarily have to, but if you can, but if you can, it, it would be good because like, so say for instance, your thing was chocolate. Like it's like, oh my God, I have to have the chocolate now. I have to have the chocolate now. I have to have the chocolate now. I can't live without the chocolate, whatever it is, you know, whatever you're thinking. So the more, the more you can, I suppose, meet yourself where you're at, the more effective it's going to be. But it certainly is going to help if you just do that as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's another question there. Let me see. Uh, there's a question in the chat box. Yes. Um, yeah. You tap under both arms or and under each eye. Uh, you can do. You can do. So you could do like that, whatever. You can cross over like that, or you could do it like that. So sorry, that, you could do one or two hands there and like that if you want, or you could do like that. So absolutely, if you wanted to, you could you could use both hands. Okay. Rania, I find this really fascinating because um, during the week, I don't know where I've seen it, but um, they were saying that gorillas actually tap on their chests because their thymus is there to, <laughs> so even gorillas. No. The tars on the thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. I think... Yeah, and I think we know instinctively, do you know what I mean? We do know instinctively like what to do, whatever, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so somebody said, um, I feel the top of my tummy just under my breast is where I hold a lot of stress. It's hard or whatever. Will this clear this blockage? Absolutely, you could certainly, you know, um, first of all, I'd say if you have any kind of sensations, body sensations, like do always go to your doctor first, just to make sure that there's nothing untoward there. But um, absolutely, it could, it could definitely help with that because we kind of, you know, we hold stress in different parts of our body. And as I say, sometimes when we don't express or whatever, you know, we might get a headache. You know, I remember there are certain people who I would find, <laughs> would have found challenging. And I'd always get a headache every time before I saw them. Usually, so our bodies often come up to speak, but we're not expressing what's going on. So that can happen a lot. So, so I thought what we might do, that's a, a, a good question. So this person has said that, um, has asked about um, yeah, the top of the top of the uh, tummy, just under the breast is where they hold the stress. So I'm going to show you, and I thought it would be a good idea. Well, maybe, would we like to do it? How are people feeling about COVID? Are people, would people like to do a bit of tapping on COVID? Are people feeling a bit anxious and a bit stressed about COVID? Do you have maybe thumbs up, yes, or whatever. I can see you tell saying yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, a few yes there. So you might just do a general round on COVID first of all. And that person who has the stress under their 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 breastbone or whatever it is. So just to notice how the, it's feeling. Now, maybe just to give it a rating. So 10 is the most intense of the feeling there and zero is none. And just to see how it's feeling afterwards. But we might actually get to do something on physical stuff because it's a really nice way of working. And it's a kind of very, I suppose, non-invasive way of work. And it's something that you could all do whatever. So, okay. So what would people like to just say, like what's some of the emotions going on at the moment for the thinking about COVID or just talk to me a little about it because the more, the more relevant I can make it to you, the more effective it's going to be. So if anybody has any kind of just, just any comments of like how they're feeling about COVID or how they're feeling at the moment or are they feeling stressed? Is it work? Is it kids? Like, you know, is it actually the virus uh, home itself? Schooling. Homeschooling for me at right. the moment is okay. a challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how is that making you feel exhausted? Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and impatient. Do you know, um, it's bringing up emotions that <laughs> I haven't had in a while. Okay. Okay. And um, if I could ask you now at this point in time, um, so somebody else has said that the worry about job security, finances in the future. Yeah, very relevant. Uh, how are you feeling now at the moment in terms of um, what were the emotion, main emotion that you're feeling now? Just to guess. Um, I'm kind of bored and stressed. That's because of, uh, you know, this is going to go on. I've heard it might go on further than February, the homeschooling. Okay. So uh, what would you call that word? Um, anxious. Anxious. Great. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to kind of throw everything in together. You know, there's lots of kind of things coming in from people like people feeling lonely, missing friends, 
worrying about job security, whatever. So we're just going to kind of put it all into the pot together. I'm just going to have a look at the chat box just to see um, what else is there. Um, stressed, hopeless. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it all. And somebody, um, yeah, somebody's asking about um, uh, feet, pain in the feet. So we're going to we'll talk about body stuff afterwards. So we just hold that thought and we come back to it. Um, okay okay so we're just going to do a general round and it's um even if it's not necessarily 100 percent relevant uh 100 relevant to you i see another um quest it's a comment there that it makes me feel lonely yeah okay um even if, it's not, if it's not 100 relevant to you please say the words or whatever and what i'd like you to do is kind of to make it just to take stock of how you're feeling at the moment so just so just to stop and say, okay, look, what's the main emotion I'm feeling now? Is it stress or is it loneliness or whatever? I just to give it a rating. 10 is the most intense of the feeling and zero is no intensity at all. So just to tune into yourself and just to see where you're at. Okay. And then when we finish that, I'm going to get you to take a rating again, just to see where you're at and just to see if that's changed. And for some people, it might not change and if it hasn't changed it means we're probably not being specific enough so we're just going to do a very what i call a global round a very general round and um so jane <laughs> if you would be my tapping partner again that would be great sure. and i might just start off maybe just feeling maybe being a little bit overwhelmed because i think certainly for people who are, have children and they're homeschooling they're trying to work or whatever it's really quite intense it's quite a lot so we might just do a little bit i'm feeling overwhelmed for so even though, I feel really overwhelmed. I feel really overwhelmed. I have so much on my plate at the moment. I have so much on my plate at the moment. I'm trying to keep everything going. I'm trying to keep everything going. And I'm being pulled in all these different directions. And I'm being pulled in all these different directions. And I'm just feeling completely overwhelmed. And I've just been completely overwhelmed. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel overwhelmed. Even though I feel overwhelmed. I don't know if I can keep doing this. I don't know if I can keep doing this. They say to go on be this homeschooling will go on beyond February. They say that homeschooling will go on beyond February. I don't know if I'll go on beyond February. I don't know if I'll go beyond February. Because I've got so much on my plate. I've got so much on my plate. And I'm completely overwhelmed. And I'm completely overwhelmed. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel completely overwhelmed. Even though I feel completely overwhelmed. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. I'm being stretched so hard. I'm being stretched so hard. Pulled in so many directions. Pulled in so many directions. And it's just too much. And it's just too much. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. So I'm going to use two hands here. You can use one or two if you like. So feeling overwhelmed. Feeling overwhelmed. It's just too much. It's just too much. Pulled in all these directions. Pulled in all these directions. They say homeschooling will go on beyond February. They say homeschooling will go on beyond February. I don't know if I'll last that long. I don't know if I will last. It's just too much. It's just too much. And it's really intense. It's really intense. And I feel completely overwhelmed. And I feel completely overwhelmed. I take a big deep breath in. So I'd love just to check in with Kathleen and just to see how she's feeling after that one. Kathleen, um, who was speaking there a minute ago. So we'll just let her. And you're on mute. Okay. Kathleen, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. I feel uh, easier, actually. My tummy isn't as feeling as heavy. Good. Yeah, good. definitely. Yeah, good. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so well, gonna, you spend you spend more time at the very beginning, obviously, right? Yeah, now it's different to doing it in kind of a group setting. So normally, what I do is we do three rounds on the on the the side of the hand, and then one round around the body. 
And I suppose with the group setting, like it's, you know, it's, I suppose it's a different way of working. And I, I might go a couple of times around the body, but generally, yes, you, I would, you, one would spend more on the, 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 um, the, the side of the hand point. Is that kind of setting the scene? It is exactly, exactly. Yeah. Say, say, this is where we're at, or whatever. And when we're tapping on these points around the body, it's reminder phrases from what we've said on the, at this point. And it's just what, what when you're tapping on the body, it's helping to connect the file. So this file will be connected to this file, and it's just trying to connect them all, or whatever, and just to, to release whatever any stress that might be connecting anything to. Yeah. Okay. So we might do another just round on being overwhelmed because I feel that for people, if people are overwhelmed, it's very hard to do anything and to see beyond it if you're feeling overwhelmed. So if anybody's ever feeling that, that's always a good place to start. So we might just being do another round on feeling overwhelmed, and uh, and then what I might do is kind of address some kind of some of the other issues that people brought up. So, so even though I'm still feeling overwhelmed, even though I'm still feeling overwhelmed, I do feel a bit calmer. I do feel, I feel a bit calmer. calmer. But there's still an awful lot to do. There's still an awful lot to do. And I'm still being pulled in all these different directions. And I'm still being pulled in all these different directions. And I'm still feeling overwhelmed. And I'm still feeling overwhelmed. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm still feeling overwhelmed. Even though I'm still feeling overwhelmed. I can't believe they're talking about going beyond February. I can't believe they're talking about going beyond February. I really don't know if I'll last that long. I really don't know that I'll last that long. And I'm still feeling overwhelmed. And I'm still feeling overwhelmed. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay. So this remaining overwhelmed feeling. This remaining overwhelmed feeling. I'm still feeling overwhelmed. I'm still feeling overwhelmed. There's so much to do. There's so much to do. There's so much pressure on me. So much pressure on me. I'm feeling a little bit calmer. I'm feeling a little bit calmer. But I'm still feeling overwhelmed. I'm still feeling overwhelmed. All this pressure. All this pressure. And so much for me to do. And so much for me to do. I take a big deep breath in. Great, okay. Again, if people just want to check in with themselves and just to see how they're feeling, I and mean, we will do a little bit more on the other aspects that people um, brought up. Okay. Just allowing people to take their time with this. I'm not going to rush anyone. So. Okay, good. Okay. Kathleen, how are you doing? You can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down just to, or you can tell me. Yeah. Good. Okay, great. Okay. So we're going to do um around so a couple of things people kind of would talk about, like people worried about their finances, um, lonely, missing friends, uh, job security, exhausted. Yeah. Um yeah, lonely at a time when I really need to support family and friends. Okay. Significant trauma. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Okay. So even though even though we're still in the midst of all this COVID. We're still in the midst of all the COVID. And I'm really worried about my job. I'm really worried about my job. I'm really worried about finances. I'm really worried about finances. Am I still going to have a job? Am I still going to have a job? How am I going to survive? How am I going to survive? And I'm just exhausted with everything. And I'm just exhausted with everything. Feeling really stressed. Feeling really stressed. But I'm also feeling lonely. I'm also feeling lonely. I'm missing the connection with loved ones. I'm missing the connection with loved ones. I'd love to be able to see them. I'd love to be able to see them. I'd love to be able to hug them. I'd love to be able to hug them. And I'm just missing that connection. And I'm missing that connection. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though. Even though. I'm really worried about my finances. I'm really worried about my finances. I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about my job. And I feel at times that I have to try harder with my job. And I feel at times I have to try harder with my job. Because I'm afraid I'm going to be let go. Because 
because I'm afraid I'm going to be let go. And I'm feeling all of this pressure. All of this pressure. All this pressure about finances. All this pressure about finances. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Oh, but we're just talking about so really worried. Really worried. Feeling this anxiety. Feeling this anxiety. Worried about my finances. Worried about my finances. Worried about my job. Worried about my job. I don't feel my job is secure. I don't feel my job is secure. And that puts more pressure on me. And that puts more pressure on me. And then I try to work harder. And then I try to work harder. And I go to keep going around the body. And that causes more stress. And that causes more stress. Because I don't switch off. Because I don't switch off. And I'm worried about my future. And I'm worried about my future. Worried about my finances. Worried about my finances. Will I still have a job? Will I still have a job? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Feeling all of this anxiety. Feeling all this anxiety. This anxiety about my job. Anxiety about my job. And what's going to happen? And what's going to happen? Now take a big deep breath in. Okay, so I'd just like to take a reading just to see how people are doing. If even people want to send me something in the chat box or people want to take themselves off mute or whatever, but especially people who sent me messages, I'd be like to see how their stress levels are, if they come down or whatever, and just to hear a little bit about what's going on. If anybody wants to share anything. How are you feeling after that? Oh, good. Like somebody says that's from a seven down to a three. That's great. That's brilliant. Uh, feeling more relaxed. That's great. Thank you. Good. Good to see. Okay. How are you feeling after that, Jane? I feel great. I feel very relaxed. Um, I, I do think it's, it's a very good technique for stress reduction. How does it fit alongside um, psychotherapy and counseling? Is it, I presume it's a sort of an adjunct that yeah i mean and i suppose the people um some says they're feeling less on edge that's great thank you for sharing that um i suppose the type of people like who come to me what i would say the people who've been around the block they've done all the talking they understand why they are the way they are but yet they're not feeling any better and they haven't ch behaviors haven't changed and i suppose sometimes talking about things is enough but what we're doing is we're working on the emotions and unfortunately, well, forced or forcedly, but we're not driven by logic. We're driven by our emotions. We're driven by fear. We're driven by desire. We're, all these things are things that drive us. It's not logic. And I know that that's illogical. Logically, I know I shouldn't have that piece of chocolate, but I want, do you know what I mean? So that's not what we're driven by. So that's, it's a different, um, so I suppose we're working directly on the emotion. So, but I think different, you know, one size doesn't fit all for some people just to talking about, like I've worked with some people, they felt, it's too quick, you know, and they wanted, I got somebody who'd had a, a, a loss, a death in the family. And they said, no, I really want to take my time with this. I do it really nice and slowly. And they just felt that this tapping was just going to be a bit too quick for them. And then for others, you know, so I just think you, you go with what resonates with you. But um, mm. I do have some people who might be doing a counseling alongside it. Some people do it instead of counseling. So it just really depends on what, um, you know, where you're at, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I ask a question. Yes. Um, Who is this? Uh, this, is, this is Annie. Annie. Hi, Annie. There you are. Um, I'm just wondering, um, I guess for me, that the most, um, I guess, powerful part of what you say in, in the tapping is when you do the, I completely love and accept myself. Um, and I'm surprised to find that in the sequence of what's said, you don't come back to that again at the end. Uh, and it's, I suppose it's just, you, you can do that. It's, no, it's absolutely not. But I suppose it's, and I suppose the way Gary Craig said it was like, you're, you're setting up the problem. So even though I have all this stuff going on or whatever, and I'm say I'm a complete basket case, I accept myself and this is where I am. So it's just about accepting yourself. But but there's no reason why you can't if, if you would like to do that. So that's obviously resonating with you. So yeah. there's no reason why you can't add that into your into your tapping around the body as well. So, yeah, that's a good there's point. There's a particular yeah. logic to not doing it then. 
No, there isn't. There isn't. No. And like some people find it like, and I still feel say, oh my God, that's so American. I've had people yeah. say that to me, say, I don't want to say that or whatever. And yeah. um, so you can use whatever words. I, I um, the one lady I work with, she always says like, I soothe and comfort myself. Even though I'm feeling this, I soothe and comfort myself. Yeah. And she says it like, oh my God, I feel so relaxed already. You know, it's so lovely. So whatever words will work for you or whatever resonates with you. Yeah. Okay. yeah right. Great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have a couple more uh, questions there in the chat box. So I'm just going to kind of go through. Um, okay, so people feeling relaxed, whatever, which is good. Uh, people have gone down intensely, six to a three. So good question. How long does this feeling of stress reduction generally last after a round of tapping? Very good question. I suppose the thing is that the more you get to the root of things, the more effective it's going to be. So it's great for top line stuff. And I suppose really what you want to be getting to is the root so the more specific you are the more effective it's going to be so say for instance oh my god i feel stressed so how could you get more specific okay so what is causing me to feel stress is it my work situation is it the homeschooling situation is it um is it my relationship is it the kids are driving me out of whatever so what's causing you to feel the most stress so the more specific you are so if they find the tapping isn't working the more specific you are, the more effect it's going to be. And um, so say you say, okay, my it's um it's my job, say for instance, it's my job. So what exactly is it about your job? Is it the fact that you're worried about you're going to lose your job? Is it the fact that you've got too much to say uh, or too much work to do? Is it um yeah, that we're worried about the future? So so the more specific you are, the more effective it's going to be. So say for instance, actually I'm worried about the actual work I'm doing. So what is it about the work you're doing? Is it a project? Is it having to work with a difficult colleague? So, so the more you can drill down, the more effective it's going to be. Okay. So somebody's kind of saying actually they're feeling a bit sad. So yeah, so I can, so we, we make sure that in the next round because sometimes what it does, it brings up emotions or whatever. And if it's bringing up an emotion um, just tap on the so and just, you know, it's all about meeting where you are. So even though I'm feeling sad, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to feel sad, but there is a lot of sad. I mean, when you think about COVID and, you know, all that we have lost, like it is a big kind of big grieving thing. So feeling sad isn't that unusual. And I would think it's a, quite a, a normal reaction to everything that's going on. And, and maybe if you haven't given space to it before, doing this tapping has kind of brought it up and brought it out. Okay. Uh, but we can do that in the next one, kind of feeling a bit sad. Um, so somebody's asked, when doing the tapping on your own, does it assist to close the eyes? I find that I do so automatically. So some people say it's better to do it with your eyes open. And if you're getting very sad and you're getting very emotional, um, it's better to keep your eyes open up. So if you find, oh my God, I'm getting really into a deep funk or whatever, just keep your eyes open and up, open and up, whatever. If you're feeling like it's a lot of tears coming, whatever, then you could certainly um, tap on the chest. But if you find it comfortable to do it with your eyes closed, then there's no reason why you can't do that. Yeah. Oh, question here. Is it similar to progressive muscle relaxation or is it that different? I have no idea what progressive muscle relaxation is. So I, I'm sorry, I have no idea about that. So sorry about that. Um, somebody's saying uh, stress levels decreased. I see you repeat the statements going around the body on the second round. You introduce you, ask, can you please discuss? Okay, so I shouldn't have done that. I should have done. Normally, what you do is uh, you're very tight. You, you do up the aspects, whatever you have on the the the, the um the side of the hand point, or whatever. You just use them. So I obviously have added in some aspects when I was tapping around the body, but um, but that's you know we're doing kind of very general stuff and very global stuff. And like if I was working with a client, I'd be very keeping it very tight and um, being very very specific. But I suppose it's a bit more relaxed and kind of freer when I'm working in a group setting like that. So, um, so that's, I hope that's answered your questions. Okay. So, um, we might do something on kind of feeling lonely or whatever. Um, um, and, uh, you know, sad. And I think, you know, I'm aware that there are people who, certain there are people who, if they're certainly not Irish, they haven't been able to go and see family and they're missing the supports and all that. So it's a really tough time for people. Um, so you might just do something on because people brought up about feeling about being feeling lonely and feeling sad. And I just want to check the else in the chat box. Uh, oh, is there an element of self hypnosis about the affirmations? I don't think so. I don't think so. it's not. It's it's not a hypnotic thing. This it isn't about hypnosis, and um, I suppose it's sending the calming signal to the brain. But I'm not really sure. I quite understand this. The question um, is it. It's not. It's not about trying to get you to do something. It, it's 
tapping is meeting you where you're at. So if where you're at is you're very stressed and you're very anxious, whatever, it's 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 giving voice to that. Say this is where I am. I'm a complete basket case, or I hate everything. I hate my job, whatever. But um, it's not about a self hypnosis. I don't know whether to answer the question, um, but maybe I haven't quite understood it. That was Please. Richard, I think. And there's Richard. Do you want to say something? Hmm. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not remotely skeptical about the, the, I've read quite a bit about it and I am inclined to, to believe there's something very significant there. I'm just, uh, I've observed uh, commonalities with, with certain meditation techniques and self-hypnosis techniques. And I'm just curious. I'm, I have no mm -hmm. particular angle on it. I was just curious, you know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not aware, I mean, and um, I'm not aware of that. Um, you know, I mean, I think you, the, you, there's certain language that you would use in kind of hypnosis or whatever and, self, and certain calming statements or whatever. And I did NLP and I also did a bit of hypnotherapy, or whatever. So, so yes, I suppose I could if I wanted to bring in some of that. Um, but, um, but, you know, people, I know people have found it very calming. So like, like a meditation, you know, and I think whatever is going to help you to relax, whether it's tapping or a meditation. So, but I know I haven't answered your question, but I'm not. 100% sure I, that it is kind of self hypnosis, but it just, it's just it's sending calming signal to your brain, and I suppose hip, a hypnosis would do that as well, but in a different way. Yeah, thanks very much. Great. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, somebody's asked about addiction. Okay, um, okay, and we do cravings. Okay, so I, I will do cravings. Okay, because that's that's a bit of fun. Um, we can have a bit of fun with that. Um, they said wine and chocolate. Yeah. Where would we be without buying a chocolate? Okay, so we'll do that. So I might just do something on the feeling sad and the lonely or whatever, because, you know, we have lost quite a lot. And so I think that there is, a, just to be, I suppose, to be present, um, to be present, yeah, okay, so I've seen all the messages. Just to be present to like all that we have lost or whatever. And just so, so, just as that, okay. So even though, I'm feeling sad. Being and I'm missing my friends. And I'm missing my friends. Catching up on Zoom isn't the same. Catching up on Zoom isn't the same. And I'm missing my family. And I'm missing my family. I'd love to have the support. I'd love to have the support. And I'd love to give them support. I'd love to give them support. And I'm just missing this connection. And I'm just missing this connection. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm feeling sad. Even though I'm feeling sad. And I'm feeling really lonely. And I'm feeling really lonely. This has gone on for so long. This has gone on for so long. And I've been behaving and sticking by the rules. And I've been behaving and sticking by the rules. And I'm really missing out. And I'm really missing out. I'm missing people. I'm missing people. And I'm feeling sad. And I'm feeling sad. For all that I've lost. For all that I've lost. And I'm feeling lonely. And I'm feeling lonely. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay. So feeling really sad. I'm feeling really sad. All that we've lost in the last year. All that we've lost in the last year. Missing the connections. Miss the connections. Miss my family. Miss my family. I'd love to be able to be with them. I'd love to be able to be with them. I'd love to have their support. I'd love to have their support. And I'd love to be able to support them. And I'd love to be able to support them. And I'm feeling sad and lonely. I'm feeling sad and lonely. And I deeply and completely accept myself. <laughs> and I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, now take a big deep breath in. So I hope the person who put that in the chat box that they're missing, you know, they've had been dealing with a lot that that's helped to take a little bit of the charge off the emotion. Um, so we might do another round and maybe um, Maybe just something on, on wine and chocolate. So somebody said they had wine and chocolate. Okay. Okay. So somebody, okay. So that's obviously brought up a lot of emotion. So it's open to floodgates. Okay. So 
Okay, so if people are feeling really um, a lot of emotion, so what I'm going to get you is just to tap here and if everybody just tap along, we're just going to feel the support of the group. Um, so if it's opened up a lot, you just take a lovely big deep breath. So breathe in and out. And breathe in and out. And breathe in and out. And do one more breathe in and out. So I'm hoping that person is feeling a little bit better. If you're not feeling better by the end of this, just message me or whatever and we can have a chat offline afterwards. Um, and maybe I think for some people, if they've been keeping it all in and haven't allowed themselves the space to kind of feel about all that they've lost, because it has been really sad. And you know, we have lost a lot. Um, so we might actually do a round, we might do a positive round or whatever, just to see if we can, just to, so, yeah, just do a positive round after that. So maybe the person who um, I hope you're feeling a little bit better and maybe after this round. Um, yeah, okay. Does somebody else want to be um, your partner? Would anybody else like to be my partner? Don't all rush. Okay. <laughs> no is the answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this person says you have to feel a bit better. That's good. Okay, so we might just do um, a round, maybe just do again, maybe a positive round. And then um, what we might do is then do something on cravings because it's a really good one too. We can have a bit of fun with it. Okay, so even though, even though I didn't realize there was all that emotion there. I didn't realize there was all that emotion there. And maybe I just hadn't given it space. Maybe I just hadn't given it space. And maybe it's better out than in. Maybe it's better out than in. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though. Even though. I hadn't realised there was so much emotion. I haven't realised there was so much emotion. And it is tough. And it is tough. But there is a bit of a change coming. But there is a bit of a change coming. Trump has left office today. Trump has <laughs> left office today. Brilliant. Yeah. And there's a vaccine. And there is a vaccine. And I may not be at the top of the list. And I may not be at the top of the list. So there is some hope there. But there is hope there. And things are going to get better. And things are going to get better. It may not happen straight away. It may not happen straight away. But things are going to get better. But things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Okay, great, okay. So things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Today was already a great day. Today was already <laughs> a great day. Joe Biden is in. <laughs> Joe Biden is in. There's a vaccine. There is a vaccine. So things are, are looking good. Things are looking good. They're looking better than they did yesterday. They're looking better than they did yesterday. And even though I'm not top of the list. And even on the top of the list. The vaccine will be coming my way. The vaccine will be coming my way. We're going to go around. So things are going to get better. The things are going to get better. I know it won't happen straight away. I know it won't happen straight away. And we probably have a few more months of difficult times. Probably have a few more months of difficult times. But things are getting better. But things are getting better. And I'm feeling more hopeful. And I'm feeling more hopeful. The vaccine is on its way. The vaccine is on its way. Trump is on his way. Trump on his way out. And today is a good day. Today is a good day. And apologies to any Trump supporters. <laughs> <laughs> and take a big deep breath in. Okay, good. So I'd just love to do a catch up. If anybody wants to share how they're feeling, we will do something on wine and chocolate or whatever. And just uh, if anybody would like to even just put in the chat box or come off mute and just tell me how they're feeling now, it'd be nice. And I actually, I noticed that somebody was yawning. 
yawning is a great sign of release okay so it's a really good sign um there thank you very much for that so someone said feeling good uh if you're yawning that means you're releasing emotion so that's a good sign so yeah yeah so yawning yawning is a perfectly natural thing anyone else how is anybody else uh billy and Anne, there you you're you're off mute so i'm going to ask you how are you doing <laughs> Uh, no, much more relaxed now. Yeah. Good, good. I mean, perhaps it was my yawn. If it was, I apologise. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's a good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yawning is a good thing. Okay. Anybody else want to share how they're doing? Um, and you don't have to, but if anybody wants to, that's great. Uh, so, Kathleen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing much better. Thank you for your time. Um, I've briefly come across the EFT, you know, before and. I, I've tried it, but I find that my mind goes blank when I'm talking. So it's, you know, um, when I start off, but then it's like I, um, I forget to say the words and, I, you know, I'm not talking anymore then and I'm just tapping. Okay. You know, well, it's, well, in that case, so it's all about meeting you where you're at. So I would say that even though my mind has gone blank, I can't find the words. And then you will find that the words will come. So it's really about meeting you where you're at. So if you're, if where you're at, oh, my mind's gone completely blank, that's what you do. Even though my mind's gone completely blank, I can't think of anything to say. And eventually the words will start to come. So that's kind of like a stress response or whatever. So that's like, a, so the blood has gone from the, the calm part of the brain, or, you know, gone to the, the amygdala. So, um, so just meet yourself where you're at. So if that's what comes up, then uh, do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay. Well, there's a good question there from Denise um, Gronia. Yeah. For people who are unable to physically touch um, themselves. Sorry, hold on yeah. a sec. Yeah. Uh, the so, yeah. Themselves, is it effective if a carer touches the points? Absolutely. Absolutely. And does so, the a few things. Come up with the statements? Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, if you can do this to support people or whatever, like, yes, you're not, you're not trained or whatever, but the, so you certainly can help people and you can do something good. So if, so certainly you could tap on people. So usually when I'm working with a client, you know, like in the olden days when I used to see people face to face and I would sit in my chair, the person sitting in their chair, they would be tapping on themselves. Now, sometimes a client might ask me to tap on them. So I could tap on them, but usually people would tap on themselves. So if you're in a situation with somebody and you're allowed to touch somebody um, and the person's all right with that, then, you know, absolutely, you could tap on them. I used to um, do it for my mother. Um, my mother had, um, she uh, had a lot of hip pain, a lot of pain with arthritis. And I used to do a lot of tapping for her. And so much so, so that she'd say, oh my God, will you do the tapping? So I would tap on her and I would tap on the points around the body and I would come up with the statements or whatever. Um, so, but you could always ask the person that you're working with, if you know what are they feeling or what's going on for them and so they, and, and that's really the best because if you're using their word their words it's really specific to them and um so rather than you think of like oh actually i know what you're feeling if they can use come up with words it's great but sometimes they're not going to be able to however if you're not allowed to touch them and they're not able to tap what you can do is you can imagine they can imagine just touching the points so it's kind of a bit of a magic thingy whatever so so you can tap on the points you can just touch a point and take a breath in each point. Or you, if you can't do that, you just imagine that you're touching the point. So you can actually even imagine that you're just touching the point and that is effective as well. So so if you're in a situation where that you can't actually physically touch the person, you just say, oh, you just imagine, and you can show them where, you just imagine that you're touching there and take a breath in each point. You just imagine that you're touching there and take a breath in each point and so on around the body. So you can certainly do that. Okay. Um, so, uh, Anya has asked, oh, sorry, somebody asked me about um, why do we use the even though, okay. So that was the phrase that Gary Craig came up. So he was the one who kind of formulated this and he would have been trained in thought field therapy. And so with thought field therapy, you know, your, your muscle testing. So I would imagine that he would have tested on different types of phrase and what would be the most effective. And I suppose the even though is actually, even though I have all this mess in my life or all this chaos or whatever, I'm accepting myself. So you're kind of saying I'm okay. So it's, it's just, um, I suppose he would have tested different phrase and see what would work best, but you, you don't have to use those words. So absolutely you can change them because some people say like, as say, oh my God, it's so American. I've had people say that. So whatever words feel right for you, if you don't like the even though, um, I suppose that's what I was trained and I tend to, I use it all the time, but um, sometimes I don't, you know, so, um, so you're not stuck with certain sets of words. Okay. 
hope that answers your question. So we're going to do something on chocolate and wine. Okay, so so if people want to think about a food that they absolutely they would like to eat less, I'll put it like that. So um, so maybe you can give me some examples. So somebody said chocolate and wine. So if that person wants to tell me a little bit about whatever it is, um, so if it's a chocolate, if it's chocolate that you want, or um, it's just about, okay, well, what's my favorite? So the more specific you are, what's my favorite chocolate? What's my absolute favorite? Like if it's there in front of me, I absolutely 100% have to eat it, okay? So just imagine, so just, just to be more, the more specific you are about your, whatever it is you want to work on, the better. Um, so if you give yourself, so give yourself a rating. So if you think about, okay, if, whether it's food or chocolate or carbohydrates or crisps or whatever. So 10 is I absolutely have to have them now. And zero is actually, you can just take it or leave it. So if you want to kind of give yourself a rating, whatever, and uh, and the person who put this in the chat box, um, if they want to put in, um, put in whoever that was, anyway, I can't find a thing, but if they want to kind of to make sure they give themselves a rating, so either for wine or chocolate, whatever it is. So I'm just going to do a general one. Um, would chocolate be a good one? Just give me a thumbs up. Chocolate is a good one. Chocolate's good, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone else, any other things like crisps? Is crisps one for anyone? Yeah, crisps, okay. Yeah, a few of crisps. Wine, okay. Butter. <laughs> Sorry, butter. butter. Okay, yeah. butter. Okay, <laughs> very good. Yeah, a few butters there. Okay, okay. So, um, so I'm just going to lump it all together. Now, usually when I'm working, you know, the, I'm being very specific, and the, you know, the more specific you are, um, the more effective. There's somebody saying about late night eating generally. Okay, so that is again, like you know, do I really want this cheese, chocolate, wine, or do I want to change the way I feel? And maybe you need to kind of unpack your day, and you know. If you, that's one thing, it's really important to give yourself space to process whatever's happened during the day. So if you're running all day, whatever, and then it comes to nighttime, whatever, then actually suddenly you have all this, oh my God, now I'm, all the stuff is coming out. So I have to eat to kind of to, to, to push it, push it down. So I think that if you can um, give yourself space and time to process whatever's happened during the day, that would be helpful to you. Okay. But you can also use this. And if there's a particular thing that you eat, whether it's chocolate or crisps or wine or whatever. And um, so, okay, so we're going to just do a general round on um, cravings in general. So just think about whatever your craving is and say that 10 is they absolutely have to have it and zero is actually, you know, not interest to could take it or leave it, okay? So give yourself a rating, whatever. And we're just going to do kind of a general round, okay? So Jane, uh, or if, does anybody want to be my echo? No? It's Jane again. Jane, you're you're it. Okay, okay. Bored with me? Oh, not at all. No, delighted to have you there. Thank you. Okay, so even though, even though, I love my chocolate. I love my chocolate. It is so delicious. It is so delicious. And I like to break off a little square. I break, like to break off the little square. And sometimes I bite it. Sometimes I bite. It. Sometimes I pop the whole square in my mouth. Sometimes I pop the whole square in my mouth. And I let it melt. And I let it melt. And that first hit of chocolate. And that first hit of chocolate. It's so delicious. It's so delicious. And I love my crisps. And I love my crisps. I open the bag. I open the bag. And it's the first crisp that is the most delicious. And the first crisp is the most delicious. That crunch in my mouth. Crunch in my mouth, and sometimes I like to put the whole crisp in my mouth. And sometimes I like to put the whole crisp in my mouth. And sometimes I might take the smaller bits. And sometimes I didn't catch that. I might take the smaller bits. Oh, I might take the smaller bits. And I love my butter. I love my butter. Lovely Irish salted butter. Lovely Irish salted butter. Butter, melted butter on toast. Melted butter on toast. Or on the few spuds. On the few spuds. It's just so delicious. It's so delicious. And there's nothing like it. And there's nothing like it. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. It's just a tap around the body. I love my chocolate. I love my chocolate. Breaking off that square. Breaking off that square. Taking a bite. Taking a bite. Maybe just letting it melt in my mouth. Maybe just letting it melt in my mouth. And that first hit of chocolate. And that first hit of chocolate. 
and with those crisps. The first crisp is always the best. And I love the saltiness. And I love the saltiness. And sometimes I put a whole big crisp in my mouth. And sometimes I put a whole big crisp in my mouth. And sometimes I put the little bits in my mouth. And sometimes I put the little bits in my mouth. And I love the Kerrygold. And I love the Kerrygold. I love my Irish butter. I love my Irish butter. Melted butter on toast. Melted butter on toast. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Melted butter on spuds. Melted butter on spuds. All of these cravings. All of these cravings. They're so delicious. They're so delicious. Now take a big deep breath in. Great, okay. And I saw people, some people yawning there, which is good. Okay, so release of something there, which is great. So for people who took a rating, I'd just like to see where is the rating. i just to take a rating. So where are you at before we start and what's your rating at now? And just to see if there's any change. So Anne, the butter lady, I'm just wondering how that is. Has that changed at all? Um, well, <laughs> having my net gone with butter, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, okay. If you were to guess, if you were to guess, um, maybe three now. Okay, and it okay. would have been maybe six. Okay, good. Okay, so there's been some some movement there, and I see somebody else said, uh, "Oh, somebody went from a ten to a five. Okay, um, yeah, it's late night eating generally. It's a um, yeah, ten to a five. Okay, ten to a six. Great. Okay, so so that's something that you could do. You could certainly work on that. You know, yourself or whatever. Just work on the cravings, and doing that, you're going to be releasing anxiety because cravings are very much linked to anxiety. So even working on that is going to help you to feel calmer as well. We had, uh, Gronje, we had a question last session um, about pets, and I know Linda has a dog there. Oh, right, yes, yes. And I had a dog with me last time, and, it, and you can tap, tap pets, can't you? You can, you can, absolutely. So, um, so first, you can actually tap on an animal, if an animal would allow you, whatever. Now, with a cat, that's not going to happen. But you certainly can tap on an animal, or you can surrogate tap for them. And you could actually just imagine, like, what's going on in their head. So if... Um, so I have I have done it for um, a couple of, we, we have cats in our house, so a couple of times. So one cat, um, Gladys, when we moved abroad, um, did I tell the story the last time, uh, Jane? When yeah, we moved, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, when we moved, um, we were moved, you know, we moved to China, whatever, and we couldn't take the cat with us, whatever, we had to find our home. And anyway, she ended up with my sister-in-law in England, who very kindly took her with But she said that every time she went to the vet, that she used to get sick in the car or whatever and i did some tappings because do surrogate tapping on the cat or whatever you know and and actually what came up with the tapping was actually that she so she my sister-in-law lives in england and my brother brought her over but that she was enclosed in this tiny cat carrier of course i she should have been in a bigger one i didn't realize that and that actually it was a very rough cross and she got seasick so every time she was being brought to the vet and being put in this thing it was bringing her back to that time Okay, so so he, it, it, it's, it's really nice. It's a great question. Thank you, Jane, for bringing that up. So, so he can surrogate tap. So you can imagine like what's going on. What do you think the cat might be thinking? What do you think the dog might be thinking? Um, I've done work with people uh, where they worked on horses and horses who've had behavioral issues or whatever. Uh, and there's, there's, anyway, there's lots of stuff online. If people want, are interested in tapping for animals, there's lots of stuff online, um, but it works very well, for, very well for animals. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so are there any other questions there? We're kind of coming to the end now. Any other chat, questions? Chat comments. Okay. Um, oh, those are just the um, going from 10 to 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think lots of people had a, yeah. Objection. Yeah, I think we've probably come to the end of the session, Gwanya, unless yes. anybody has any more. There's a question here. So where did I study and where do I teach? Okay, so I actually... I, even though it's not, it has its roots in China, that I, I studied it when I was based in China. Um, I persuaded somebody who was going to Hong Kong and I was living in Shanghai at the time. And I thought, well, it's, um, uh, it's you know, I said, it's kind of in the general area, whatever. So she came to Shanghai, whatever. So that's where I learned it. Um, I'm teaching everything online at the moment because obviously in the night of COVID. So I, I do have a course starting next week. 
uh, level one starting next week. So if you want to kind of send me a message, but um, I, I run courses regularly on that. Now, somebody is that, was, uh, is that for people who want to do it themselves? Yeah, for somebody. Yeah, right. who, yeah. So so level one is kind of I suppose it's kind of a more general. Um, I know I've just got two places left. Uh, level one is more general. And if people want to train to be practitioners, there's a level two and there's a certification program. So somebody's asked me about, um, can you recommend some peer reviewed articles about EFT and scientific journals? There's a very good book called The Science of EFT, and it's by a lady called Peta Stapleton, P-E-T-A-S-T-A-P-L-E-T-O-N. So Peta Stapleton, and it's called The Science of Tapping. So she's written a book uh, on the science of tapping and um, also, if you go to EFT International, which is a training organization that I'm on, I'm with, and they have a lot of kind of research stuff there, whatever. So you might find something there that's of interest to you. Um, and does somebody else have a, um, okay. Okay, well, I think that's, you know, that's great. Thank you very much, Gronja. I think that was the most relaxing evening, a lovely relaxing seminar. Now I can go and tuck into my chocolate, not. <laughs> <laughs> So just, just to say to everybody, I'm doing a session, um, a different sort of session next week on, on best life guru, best life messages from gurus um, that I've worked with. And then Tony Humphreys is doing a session on dreams. Sabina Brennan is going to be talking about brain fog. And there are several other, yeah, good one. And I think there are several other seminars, Zoom seminars coming up. So keep an eye on my website seminars. So thank you all very much for coming and thank you Gronja. Thank you very much and I'll send out the recording of this to everybody. Yeah great okay. As I somebody's asked you about um it, it, it message me directly whatever um if, if you're interested. Sorry so they're asking should they go through you Jane but no info okay. info at Gronja M for mother Gronja M O'Neill dot com. Okay, great. but I'll be running. No, I can pass on any inquiries as well. Yeah. Great, yeah. So you can pass them on to Jane. So she can certainly pass them on to me. So thank you so much for everybody for coming and for your participation. It's great to see everybody. And uh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Gron. You're you. very interesting. Great. Okay. Thanks. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.